everybody, welcome to the campus here at Bishop Girton High School, home of the Cardinals. Jason Roby calling all the action for you tonight on the highlight guy. Steve Cody is the man on the moving pictures. I'm joined here by head coach Liv Orlando for our Live with Liv Minute. And Liv, uh, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the holiday tournament that you had in Hollis Brookline had to be really pleased. You played three quality opponents. I believe the combined record of those three teams currently stands at like 12 and two. Yeah. And uh, in Salem, Wyndham, and a Goffstown team that you lost to yeah. that you in the regular season, but you beat them in the tournament. Yeah. You've seen a lot of growth here with your team, haven't absolutely, you? Absolutely, huge amounts of growth, which is what we want, right? Like we obviously don't want to be the best that we're going to be back in November when we start. Right. We want to continuously grow. So I was super proud. We're starting to execute more and just gel together. I was just exceptionally proud of the defensive effort in the, the whole tournament. I thought they did an exceptional job. They they really applied the pressure early and often. And, and yeah, they came in, they played, and they, they wanted to win when your girls came back you've had a, a little bit of a layoff between yeah. then and now what was the focus in practice just kind of business as usual or did yeah. you, did the girls kind of were they surprised at all at the success they had and are eager to build on that or is it no this is where we expect to yeah be? yeah so i don't think there was much of surprise because we always say one of our team goals this year is practice like we play, right? So that's our mindset going into every practice. And if you want to become a successful program, you have to practice like a successful program. And that's not just when you pick and choose and want to show up. It's, it's an everyday sort of thing. So I, I think it, it's it's good that we're doing what we're supposed to do, but it's it really is based off of how we're preparing and what those practices and high level intensity looks like. You talk about successful programs. Great yeah. segue into this next question. You're facing one of the premier programs yeah. here in the state of New Hampshire tonight. Yeah. Uh, a team that Bishop Girton has had their number over the last couple of years. This is a very good Pinkerton team. They played a, a yeah. great in their holiday tournament, taking Bishop Fian down to the wire, only losing by three points. Right. What can you tell us about this uh, three and O Pinkerton team? That yeah, you're see tonight? They're, they're super talented. They're long and, and they're skilled. Like they have kids playing at the collegiate level next year and, and in years to come. So it's no secret, it's going to be challenging, but our message and our mindset is a, a favorite quote of mine, and it was actually from Doris Burke. I'm sure you know her. Sure. Um, be the salt, right? So yeah. salt makes food taste better. It adds flavor. It enhances it, right? So that's our message to the girls. That's our kind of team mantra for the whole year is be the salt in the sense that what are you going to do to enhance the team? Is it do you have great bench energy? Are you going to dive on the floor for a loose ball and take a charge? Like it, there's so many different things that you could do and so many different ways that it could look. So that that's what we're coming in here tonight. We want to just be the best that we can be and everyone do something. That's what we want. She is Olivia Orlando, the head coach of the Bishop Girton Cardinals. That's the Bishop Girton basketball team. They're going to take on Pinkerton Academy in just a minute. Welcome to the Salt Factory, everybody. <laughs> coach, want to wish you good luck tonight. Go get it. Thank em. you. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks, you guys. betcha. Thanks, Steve. All right, so it should be a, uh, a good one tonight as this Bishop Girton team comes in here tonight with a 1 and 2 record in the regular season, but they went 3 and 0 in the holiday tournament at Hollis Brookline, and they beat three formidable opponents in Salem, Wyndham, and Goffstown, a team that had beaten them previously. They are uh, playing a different level of basketball right now, and so it should be an interesting game. This is a great test for them early in the season here. You got four or five games under your belt, and you're running into a team that uh, really is one of the top one or two teams in the state of New Hampshire favored to win a basketball title. We will have a special guest for you here tonight. I know if you've uh, been following the uh, highlight guy feeds and so forth. Uh, we're going to have a, a guest color commentator here this evening, and we're excited to uh, have this individual with us. Although he has he has disappeared momentarily, I think he's going to be making his way up to the up to the uh, the highlight guy press box, so to speak, taking the long way around. And uh, let him get his headset on here. We are joined by a gentleman who is no stranger to the success of this Bishop Girton basketball program. He was the guy that I called the head man uh, for the last several seasons here, leading his Girton Cardinals to several state titles. And... Uh, taking a, a break here this year, but nice enough to join us here on the Highlight Guy. He's gonna be our color commentary guy, so I wanna welcome the former 
uh, head, head man of the Bishop Girton Cardinals. And now another undefeated, uh, some success begins up here tonight, Coach. What can you tell us about, first, I, we've talked about this, this Bishop Girton team, you and I, leading up into this season. Yep. And you really love uh, this team. You think they're going to be really good. And we're going to talk a lot about them. Tell us a little bit about this Pinkerton team for those people that might not know a lot about the Astros. What are we going to see tonight from this long and athletic Pinkerton Astro team? Well, that's the first thing right there is they're long and athletic. Yeah. Um, and look, I think that by, by any standard, these guys are a state title contender. Um, you know, they've always been a kind of a Final Four contender and so forth. Banged up a lot of last year um, with some key kids throughout the course of the year. Never quite found their rhythm. Um, but, boy, they're ready to go this year. And I think, you know, in, in, uh, in distinction to the past, I think Lanny's eight, nine, maybe even ten kids deep. So mm -hmm. very talented at the top of the rotation. Um, can play fast all year long. I know that's something she's looking, she's looking to do. And, um, and they got, you know, maybe the best scorer in the state of New Hampshire, Liz Lavoie. I assume, scorer. yeah, I was going to say, assume you're talking about Elizabeth Lavoie. Um, she's going to be someone that the uh, Cards going to have to contend with tonight. We're going to meet the uh, starting lineups for both of these teams here. It should be a good one. Friendly confines of uh, Bishop Girton High School. A nice crowd on hand here tonight. The Astros travel well, and certainly Girton is no stranger to welcoming Pinkerton into their nest. And it should be a, a fantastic basketball game. Coach, uh, how, have, how have things been for you? Uh, has, has it been difficult for you watching from, from the stands, watching from... Watching the highlight guy and, and not being down on the sidelines, what's that been like? I've actually really enjoyed watching you guys live. You know, it's uh, it's been a great way to take in the games, and it's certainly a different feeling, of, of course. But um, uh, I, again, you said you said earlier, I just really enjoyed watching, even in the first month of the season, this exceedingly young group of kids just get better before your eyes. So that's that's been great. And, I really enjoyed watching Liv and, and her staff kind of you know, find their sea legs. And uh, boy, BG could not have, could not yeah. have made a better decision. Um, you know, with Liv, she's she's already doing great things here. Yeah, she's doing a fantastic job. She's really been a, a, a welcome addition, and, and no stranger to this team. She's worked with you guys, right, quite a bit in the past as well. She has, yeah, in a, in a very informal way over the last couple of years. Has um, you know has found some time to you know help us out with our fall league team and get to some open gyms here and there and so forth. So she had a general familiarity with both the program and the kids, and. Um, we made a decision. It was, you know, time for her to, you know, get back into coaching and start coaching, um, you know, on a more regular basis. And, uh, you know, it just worked out. Timing was great for the school and, and for Liv, and they're off to a great start. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm going to talk about a moment that I, I saw uh, on their sideline during the uh, holiday tournament. And we'll talk about that during the break in the early action. But uh, we'll meet the starters for the Bishop Girton Cardinals. Number two, a sophomore, Maddie Long. Gets the start for Coach Orlando. Number 10 is a junior, Ayla Regan, a heck of a defender out there on the floor for the Cardinals. Number 12 is Bella Fayette, another sophomore in this youth movement for the Bishop Girton Cardinals. Holly Dufo, we saw her get off to the hot start in that game against Goffstown, hitting several three pointers in the early going. And Talia Drapo, the young sophomore who does a little bit of everything for him. For uh, She's one of the bigs, but she has a pretty good handle. And we saw her Drapo a little bit uh, in the early going or the later going of the season. We'll take a timeout for the national anthem. We'll be right back for the tip after the anthem. And now, as you all, please rise. Remove your hats as we honor America those who have served her and continue to serve her. <laughs> and now Regan, she's not shy. Yahtzee! Great way to start the game right there. Wide open three and, uh, you know, Ayla's such a streaky kid. If she gets off to a great start, um, she's tough. The nice three-point shot and good confidence, something you have to like from this Girton team in the early going. Ball comes up top to White. Now she gets it up top, dribble behind the back. Goes Jirasi, little up and in, no, battling on the boards there, and that's going to go off the hands of, uh, it looked like Alexandria White, Girton possession. Long inbounds the ball, Regan will get it back to her, and the cards will set up in their half court. Pinkerton in their man-to-man -man defense. 
Ball contested there, Dufo comes away with it. She'll step back beyond the three, gets it out to Drapo. They'll work it up top. Fayed now to the top of the key, and they'll reset. Left hand dribble. This is Regan once again from way downtown. Back iron, no. And pulling down the board there, hustling after it was White. Back the other way come the Astros. Behind the back now, setting up in the half court. Little help defense on the low block. It goes to Jirasi. Nice little give and go action there, and unfortunately, Benz couldn't handle it. Another turnover for Pinkerton. Yeah, look, interesting look early. It looks like they've, uh, Pinkerton's got Liz Lavoie guarding uh, Garden Holly Dufo, who's, uh, who's off to a pretty good start. Really, really great shooter. So they got some length on one of BG's primary scores. And just as you say that, stepping into that passing lane there was Lavoie got her, got her, uh, her hand on that ball that was intended for Dufo, and we mentioned in the pregame that she was hot in the beginning of uh, that holiday tournament game against Goffstown, knocking down four three-pointers, and Drapo going to get called for travel. Coach, we've seen a lot of those calls this year, a lot of ball fakes, and then the travel called immediately after. That is that a trend that we're seeing uh, throughout the state, not just New Hampshire, we saw it in Massachusetts as well. Yeah, I know last year was certainly a point of emphasis, and it sounds like it is again this year. I've seen a lot of that stuff, you know, just um, get a little tight, calling the game a little tighter with the travel. Um, and, and look, the girls are just going to have to adjust to that. Good help. Defense kicked out onto the baseline, and now a skip pass across the way. Three-point shot is up and good, and making him pay for that rotation was Liz Lavoy. We're locked up at three. Yeah, and there you see she's really expanded her, her, uh, her three-point game over the last year or two. She's always been a very gifted scorer, getting downhill and in the mid-range. Orlando not liking what she's seeing uh, from, in terms of the continuity standpoint of the movement of the ball. A lot of dribbling, not as much movement in that possession. So a good timeout by uh, Coach Orlando. Yeah, I mean, look, you got five of them, and with a young team like that, I think, uh, you know, you'll want to save one or two certainly for the end of a close game, hopefully, but um, no problem using that early and just try to get the kids settled down and, you know, emphasize a couple of points. You know, one of the things you see early with this Pinkerton team, they're primarily a man-to-man -man team, um, but they keep everything in front of them. Yeah. So there's good ball pressure, but, you know, with ball screens, they'll go under a lot of ball screens. Their help is great and so forth. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a battle of wills early here. And BG's got to maintain that aggressiveness and continue to attack, get downhill, and make the Pinkerton kids guard them. Um, you know, I think Pinkerton's fine if BG wants to take 30, 35 threes to take their chances. So we'll see who, you know, kind of which, which style starts to take root and, um, and is that can dictate, you know, the terms. Is of the that game. the recipe for, for success with this girl? If you're going to go under, you know, you're going to go underneath. Or ah. Yeah. Yep. Nice little inbounds play right there. A little screen the screener action. And uh, it looks like she was hacked in the act. So Ben's going to go to the line for two. The foul, I think, is going to go on. I believe it's on uh, Regan. That's her first. Knocking down the first is Ben's. Really not a lot of room for, for mistakes here, Coach, against this Pinkerton team. They, they'll make you pay. Yeah, well, this, is, this is as talented a team offensively as you're going to find in the state. So, you know, you, you just, you're right, you're, you're exactly right. You have to limit your mistakes, play as clean a game as you can possibly play, um, and just make them work. It's good positioning there by Fayed on that uh, second free throw to come away with the rebound. Cards now operating in the half court. Little ball fake there. Drapo well beyond the three-point arc. This is Fayed. Feeds Drapo again. Nice little swing pass out into the corner. Dufo guarded closely by Lavoie. We'll keep an eye on that matchup as Coach Craig alluded to it. And a foul away from the ball as uh, Reagan is going to pick up her second. And so she'll head to the bench. And we will see Jazz Rosario getting her first action. So coach mentioned, uh, ball comes out to the perimeter, dribble drive, kick out there. Lavoy now into the paint, the runner is good. She hits the deck and falls into Dufo's legs, getting up slow, she looks to be okay. And Lavoy has seven of the first eight points. Long will check in here. And again, Pinkerton just falling back. They'll pick up over the half court. Girton has yet to drive into the paint and try to force the issue here. And part of that is because of the pressure of Pinkerton. And fortunate to get a kicking call. It's going to be Girton ball on the side out. Nope, my mistake. They're going to give it to Pinkerton. So 
They'll have to pick up. But uh, to that point, Brad, would you like to see Girton try to try to ball fake and head to the hoop strong? <coughs> Look, I think you have to. Um, they're long, and they play, you know, they pack that defense in and so forth. But there's a good take right there. Nice good make. Of getting to the rim. I think you've got to try to get downhill and get the ball into the paint and make these guys defend you and draw the help and so forth. Well, and there's the result, right? Drapo goes in and forces contact, doesn't get the foul call, but gets a nice bucket. And if this becomes a game of fouls, and Coach Orlando not real happy with it because it's going to go against Drapo, and that's her second personal foul. Yeah, it's... We're gonna, you know, thai has got to stay on the floor. Pankerton to inbound the ball underneath the hoop. Comes into White. Nice move up and in. And Alexandria, the senior, is in the books. 10-5, Pinkerton. Fayed now into the paint. Takes it up into the land of the trees and double block shot, but I like the effort. Lavoie comes back hard the other way and a nice block shot of her own by Dufo. Cards will run. Three on two possibility here. The runner in the lane, and it's going to be a block shot, but I like the fact that they're forcing the issue into the basket. Drapo will come out, and checking in for the first time is Gallagher. We saw her have a nice game in that uh, game against Goffstown in the Hollis Brookline tournament. And she provides a little bit of uh, length as well. Rosario, kick pass. Gallagher, front or side, and Dupuy will get a rest on the bench. So the card's fortunate there to come away with possession. You see that, that Pinkerton length really bothering them right now. They're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. But, uh, the pass has got to be fast. they got to be crisp. And you can't lose your, your dribble that far away. Rosario, right-hand dribble behind the back. She goes. And that one nearly stolen. Driving to the hoop and a nice job. I like the look. But unfortunately, she couldn't get it to go. Dufo had a nice look at it. Good ball fake. Nice pass underneath. And a good finish there as uh, White has a bucket via the Lavoie pass. Jazz now. Left-hand dribble. Gets it on the perimeter. This is Gallagher. Oh, the jump stop. And her feet kind of maybe hit a wet spot. Five, 16-8. The Astros have doubled up the cards. But a nice job offensively there in that possession. Three steps taken. No travel call. And that's an interesting call there. It's a, it was battled for. I thought maybe it went off of Benz, but they're going to say it went off of Rosario. So Pinkerton ball. Got to come away. You know, you have to win some of those possessions. Lavoy now gets it up top to Jirasi. Left-hand dribble in the paint. Kick out and a travel call there. And there's that call again, that little ball fake jump stop before you move your feet. or You, 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 before you dribble, you move your feet. Yep. And it's consistent, Coach. We've seen it, you know. That's aggressiveness here, whether they score at the rim or not. You know, let's get down into the paint and uh, draw some help and open some kids up. It's a nice Rosario, day. and she takes it hard to the hole, and that's what we talked about. Rosario, one of those scrappy players, athletic, gets after it, fiery, and she gets hacked in the act, and she'll go to the line. Yeah, with three, three straight possessions, they've gotten into the paint. The good things, good things are going to happen when you... Uh, when you break defenses down like that. And as a result of that timeout, Coach, they regrouped and, and uh, refocused. It's already paying dividends. Back iron, no for Rosario. She'll get a second. Consistent, that one maybe a, a little bit more, but yeah, and, and uh, Coach Orlando demonstrating what she just saw on the floor just to kind of validate the call. And it's legitimate. They'll watch back on the highlight guy, and they will see that that is, in fact, the case. Nice quick hands by Drabo. She's got to be careful, though. Oh, Lavoie was looking for a backdoor cut. Pizzetti stepped in there, coming away with the steal. Is Dufo going up strong and a great make there. And that started with the work of Pizzetti. So yep. nice job, and Dufo finishes. She's, Gianna's given him a great spark since coming into the game, about two, two minutes left in the quarter, two and a half minutes left in the quarter. 40 seconds to go. Fired way downtown. Air ball, and Rosario comes away with that rebound. And the cards will run. This is Dufo, right-hand dribble, kick out, Drapo. They work it around to Jazz. Jazz behind the back, taking it in. And a nice pass and found Pizzetti. And, and uh, there was quite a collision there. Hate to see this as both girls are actually holding their heads. Pizzetti is uh, on the floor. Um, she is moving. She looks like she's okay. It was a, it was a, 
a collision that took place. Both girls uh, going for the ball, and uh, Pizzetti hit the floor, and I believe it was Jirasi as well that was going for it. And you can see Jirasi kind of feeling the right side of her head too. Clean play, just two yeah. kids, uh, two kids competing, wanting the basketball, and, and a good effort. And a, and this is what you like to see: the crowd, both both teams responding, and Pizzetti going to uh, head into the back. So. The foul will go against Pizzetti as uh, Alexandria had positioning. She'll head to the line for a pair as uh, they're in the bonus. That is the fifth foul of the first quarter. And Philbrick will get her first action. And uh, Gabby also getting some very valuable minutes here in the early part of the season. Yeah, well, again, one of those kids that uh, you know had a great JV season last year as a freshman. and. You know, it's worked her way into a you know pretty pretty key role for these guys so far early this season. White knocks down the first. She will get a second. It is a 17 to 11 Astro lead. Two out of two for the senior. 20 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Important the cards come away with something here. This should be a huge testament if they can pay off, and it does as Rosario. They clear the lane. And the freshman dribble drives in. And a steal there, potentially. Great. And a nice job by Long playing body position. Yep. Got four seconds left here. See if they can get something, uh, something late. Catch a break. The awareness of this young Cardinal team, the basketball IQ really coming through here. Good if it goes. And no good. He said the referee was uh, waving it off. But I'll tell you what, and it's an 18 to 13 game. And and I really like the way Coach Orlando is utilizing her bench in the early going here. I like the way that she's using her timeouts. Just a nice job overall by this young team. Got to be pleased down only five. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, again, like we talked about, why, why call it? Why call your second timeout? And look, you just saw evidence of why right there. And um, uh, she, she did a great job. I obviously settling down. Whatever she told them seemed to work, and I think they came out. You saw them get much more aggressive offensively and just, you know, weren't settling early. I'll just take the wall. Got to the rim a bunch, and good things happened. And then they, got, they actually got some stops defensively. I thought, you know, Jazz Rosario coming into the game mid-first quarter uh, was a huge spark for him. And then Gianna, uh, just her defensive presence. And to get the first possession of the second quarter going right to left on your screen. Nice little pick and roll there as White finishes strong at the hoop. Seven. Back the other way comes Rosario. She'll run the point, gets a pick from Drapo, a nice one. And a nice dribble drive kick out Dufo. That's a front iron shot. A good look, but not a lot of leg behind that one. That ball gets skipped out. Lavoie's not shy. That was a rainmaker. Offensive rebound and another miss. But following her own shot was Jirasi, and she'll head to the line for two. So right now, the early going here, getting beat on the glass a little bit, this young Cardinal team. Yeah, look, you know, it, that pick team is a tough matchup. And, you know, Jirasi is their point guard. And she's 5'8 all day long um, and pretty athletic. Plays, does all the little things. And, you know, right there, if she's not there and she doesn't, provide that kind of effort. You know, Pickens has got the basketball right now. So the cards will operate in the half court and they'll have to regroup and set up their offense. Little dribble drive, bounce pass back. Regan crossover. Thought she had the foul line jumper, didn't take it. Got it to Fayette instead. Fayette hits the deck and I, she hit hard, no whistle. And back the other way come the Astros. Fired from way downtown. It's a side iron, no. And the height just uh, taking advantage there, but coming away with it, battling strong is Regan. Jazz now, crossover dribble, loses it. Gets it back to Fayed. Good to see her up and functioning well. Another good take. Long, back to Fayed, looking for help, pivoting on that left foot, little step back, and a reach in foul there. And a good call as that one's gonna go against junior Hayden Lassessi. It's gonna be her first personal. The team's first. Dupuis will check back in as will Drapo. Got to come away with some points here if you're the Cardinals. Nice inbound play. Pull up jumper just inside and a nice make. 
She's comfortable, huh? Ayla's very, very comfortable offensively. Just makes good reads, keeps things simple, takes what they give to her. Nice make for her. She has five. And that ball stolen. Back the other way comes Long. She'll run. One-on-one -on -one situation here. A little leather souffle. She ran out of bounds. and Reed did not reestablish herself, so it'll be Bishop Girton ball, and I could see that there. You can watch it back on the highlight, guys. She blocks the shot, goes out of bounds, but you can't be the first person to get possession if you're not reestablished. So possession will go to the Cardinals. Nice job there by the officials. And by me. <laughs> <laughs> Trapo gets the ball to Regan. Jirasi, Sid the kid now. Right hand dribble working on Jazz. She'll give it up to Dupuy. Dupuy will reverse direction, go up strong, and a nice make there by the junior Dupuy. She's in the books. Maybe a little overextending on the defense there. Long. Yahtzee! 24-18, 4.53 to go in this one. These two heavyweights back the other way comes Drapo. She'll go into the paint, takes it strong. Nice job. And a foul call there, and that's going to go against Dupuy. And going to the line. Want to see uh, this young lady, because she is talented, want to see her go strong to the hoop, and she did just that as uh, we just saw Pizzetti head back to the bench. Yeah, nice to see Gianna back there. Looks fine, and uh, looks like she'll be able to get back into the game, which is a huge, huge benefit for uh, for BG. You can see Coach Orlando asking her, are you sure all right? And she said, yep, I'm good to go. So nice job by her, getting a little breather, and, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see her back in action. One out of two there. Good positioning on the glass by the Astros. That was Lasessi. And she'll get up to Jirasi, and they'll set up in the half court. Right hand dribble, gets a pick on ball. Dufo fights over the top of it. Nice backdoor cut there. And again, just a little aggressive on the defense, but great another rebound. great rebound by Drapo, coach. Great rebound, Nancy. That's why she's so valuable, because she's got length. Little side iron, and Rosario going in there to get that board. Dufo from way downtown. And I saw you shaking your head, coach. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, again, I, I think they've gotten themselves back into this game by thinking downhill first, um, shoot second. Yeah. Um, those shots are going to be there for them. Um, you know, again, I'd like to see them continue to turn the corner and see if they get downhill and put pressure on that Pinkerton defense. This is a five-point Pinkerton advantage, so the cards have uh, narrowed it down a little bit more. They keep whittling. We get a foul in the paint. And I don't know who they're going to give it to. It's going to be against Drapo. So that's her third coach. It's decision time, is it not? Yeah, it's a tough call here for Liv. Uh, you know, Thalia's giving him so much on the floor right now. But, you know, half, midway through the second quarter with three. Um, you know, tough call. That's why they pay her the big bucks, that's right? That's it. That's it. Ball comes over the top. And they're going to call a foul. And Regan can't believe it. That's three on Ayla, too, I think, right? So it is. Both Ayla and Talia. Three team fouls against the Cardinals. That ball comes in long, the pestering wing. Nice little up and under, but good defense there. Long has is a definitely shorter, but nice job defending. And again, just chucking the ball from the outside. 24-19 yeah. Pinkerton. Way downtown, that's a long rebound gathered in by Regan. She doesn't have the numbers, she'll slow things down. And as I say, that drives in the paint, kick out, Dufo, Yahtzee! See, there you go, right? Dribble penetration, draw the help, then you're gonna hit the wide open three. Transition defense was not great, but we're gonna see, they're gonna call it on the floor. And that's gonna go against Pezzetti, that's gonna be her first personal. But more importantly, with 3.19 to go here in the second quarter, that's the fourth team foul on Girton. One more, going to put him at the line. And again, cutting off that lane, a nice job by Philbrick. Little spin move there, dipsy do. Jirasi loses the handle. Very fortunate that Lasessi was there. Nice bounce pass, it finds its way up beyond the three-point arc. Dribble drive, kick out, and again, Quick hands and a reaching foul. That's the fifth foul. That one is going to go against Long. That's her first personal. But more importantly, it's the fifth team foul. And Pinkerton's going to head to the line for two. The new rule here uh, instituted by the National Federation of High Schools, Coach, you like it? I do. Yep. Yep, I really do. I mean, it, 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 it puts a premium on playing good defense. 
and you know you you get penalized uh, you get penalized for reaching. Uh, I, I think it's a good rule. So keeps the flow of the game going. They're less apt to maybe foul as much as uh, level. the first free throw is hit. As is the second. So two out of two for the senior Devin LeBrun. 26-22, four-point Astro advantage, 2.53 to go in the first half here. Regan got it out to Long. Pizzetti now, a little unselfish basketball. This is Philbrick, spin move, left hand, dipsy do, no soup for you. Pizzetti with the great offensive board. And they'll reset in the half court. Ball comes into the corner. Ayla, little ball fake, looked like someone maybe got the ball with their hand, and unfortunately for the cards, it goes in the books as a turnover. DeRossi, DeRossi up with the right. She side backboards that one, and battling there are the cards, and they'll run in a one-on-one -on -one here. That one comes up just short. Not a bad move by Philbrook. Just I'm, look, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay, they're being aggressive, right? I think as long as they maintain their aggressiveness and keep competing like that, you know, that's all you can ask right now. White will come out. LeBron is back in for the Astros. And Lavoy going to run the point. She'll be guarded by Pizzetti. Pestered all the way. Nice rebound there by Philbrick. This team really understanding their role. But unfortunately, stepping into the passing lane there is Jirasi. And that's just a matter of Pickard and understanding at this point what the cards are trying to do. Yep. Ball comes up top. Lavoy behind the back. The runner in the lane. Triple teamed. Can't get it to go. Good positioning on the glass by Philbrook, and she'll run. Nice bounce pass. Dufo back. Unselfish ball up and in. Great unselfish basketball there by Philbrook and Dufo. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so far, Dupuis uh, one for one and one out of two. So, so there you go. There right? it is. Your plus one. Back the other way comes Philbrick. Here comes the double team. Got to have spatial and court awareness there. And we're going to get a jump ball call. Possession's going to go to the Cardinals. So there's one of those situations where you see three in front of you. You know someone's lurking behind you. Yeah. The good. Jaws effect. And a little loose with the ball here in the last few possessions. Let's see if they can tighten it up. Look, no shot clock here, right? So they get 50 seconds. Get a good look. Phil Brick gets reached on. Hand was on top of the ball. There is no carry. That's a good no call. Jazz now. Back over to Philbrick. Philbrick. Got to be careful with that pivot foot. Spin move, no. Nice job. Gets it to Ayla. Kick back. The double team was coming. The pass was a little behind. Tufo. She's not shy. Bang. Yahtzee! All tied up here, Jason. And just like that, don't look now. They just don't know any better, Brad. Yeah, it's great to see, isn't it? Nice up and under on great the make. Team. Good move by Lasessi. And that is going to do it for the first half. But this young group down just a bucket as we head into halftime. Coach, your thoughts uh, first half of this one? Look, I mean, you, you, you and I have talked behind the scenes here for a few weeks. The thing I love about this team, again, they're young, they don't know any better, like you said. They just keep coming. They just keep coming, they play so hard. Um, they, you know, they seem to have short memories. You know, they make a mistake, they just put it away, and they go play the next play, which is such a great thing to see for a bunch of young kids. And look, two point game at halftime, really well played game. They got punched early, competitive high school basketball game. You know, really, really impressed with what I've seen from them so far. It's a puzzle. And the puzzle won't be completed till sometime in late February, early March is my guess. But this is a team that is uh, maybe ahead of schedule a little, a little bit. But uh, taking one of the perennial favorites, one of the, one of the top dogs in the state, the Pinkerton Academy Astros, who are long in the tooth with experience, who have been there, done that. And uh, this Girton team is just playing with the fire and doing everything we thought that they were capable of. It is 29-27. You are watching on the Highlight Guy. Jason Roby calling the action for you. The coach, Brad Crake, is on the color commentary. The man behind the moving pictures is Steve Cody. We're going to take a break for this halftime. We'll be back with second half action. Don't go anywhere. This one is going to go right down to the wire.
Welcome back to the campus of Bishop Girton High School. This is girls division one high school basketball action. It is the Pinkerton Academy Astros and the Bishop Girton Cardinals. And we have a good one for you here. One minute to go at halftime. It is the Astros with a 29 to 27 advantage. But this young Cardinal team is uh, staying the course, hanging in there and giving this uh, preseason favorite Pinkerton team all they can handle. Jason Rowe will be calling the action for you. The man on the moving pictures is Steve Cody uh, joining us for first half and hopefully second half uh, color commentary is former Cardinal coach Brad Craig doing a nice job of analyzing the things that we're seeing out there on the floor. Coach Craig very familiar with this Cardinal team. We'll look at the scoring uh, for you as a uh, for the Cardinals, six different scores led by Holly Dufo's eight and Talia Drapo's six. Drapo has the three fouls, as does Ayla Reagan. On the other side of the ledger, eight, count them, eight Astros have scored, led by Alexandria White's eight, mostly via the pick and roll, and uh, super senior Elizabeth Lavoie with seven. Perhaps one of the biggest numbers that I'm seeing here from the first half is an Astro team that went 10 out of 12 from the free throw line. So 10 of their 29 points coming from freebies. Pinkerton will get the ball to start off the action in the second half. As we mentioned, they have a two point advantage. Eight minutes on the clock and we are underway. Jirasi, little spin move and coach, uh, a, a pretty good game up to this point and certainly everything we hoped it would be. Yeah, great game so far. Hey, one one quick thing early. Bella Faya doesn't look like she's uh, on the floor early second half, and uh, Gianna Pizzetti gets a start in the third quarter here. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, Faya had hit the deck pretty hard down here on an offensive possession, going for a rebound. Certainly hope she's doing okay. Pizzetti, as mentioned, is in for her. Cardinals showing patience here in the first possession of the second half. Jazz thought about it. Little runner in the lane, a little too much on that. They battle for the rebound, but the length of the Astros come away with it. And running all alone on the baseline by herself. Regan just stood looking for validation from the sideline. Doesn't matter. She'll get called. And with a chance for an and one opportunity is Brooke Benz. And uh, that'll be Regan's fourth foul. She'll head to the bench. So transition defense neglected a little bit there on that one. Benz will head to the line. She knocks it down. So the success at the free throw line continues for this Astro team. This is Long. Gets it out. Pizzetti, left-hand dribble. She'll back things up, getting the second half, as Coach Craig noted. Fayette on the bench. Dufo kick out. Nice cut off there. White cut the paint off and Jazz from way downtown. That one is too long. And coming away with it are the Astros. Jirasi on the low block and another call now. And that is probably, you have to believe coach, what, uh, what Lanny Busky talked about at halftime. Look, we have the size, we have the advantage down low. Let's feed our bigs and get these guys in foul trouble. Yeah, they're getting on transition early in the third quarter as well. Knocking down the first and continuing the success from the charity stripe is Lavoie. She'll get a second. Two out of two for the senior. So a 7 nothing run to start the third quarter here. And a timeout as uh, Coach Orlando almost gets poked in the eye by the, uh, the official. Another, another good timeout, Jason. That's her third. She's still got two left in her pocket. But uh, as you said, 7 nothing start in the first minute and a half. And again, you just want to stay connected here and, and uh, try to reinforce some concepts. So pretty, pretty good call on her part. Yeah, and I think... You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of two things, right? I, I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, a Girton team that was probably pretty, pretty happy to be where they were just being down two, not saying they were settling for being down only two, but, but a feather in their cap, and maybe they thought like they had accomplished something up to that point. Meanwhile, 
you run into a Pinkerton team that was probably anything but happy with just a two-point advantage. And when those two things meet, something has got to give. And Pinkerton uh, with the early run here to start the third. And we'll see if the timeout that Coach Orlando took pays dividends like it did in the first half. Yep. Cards went on a nice little six to nothing run there after that timeout. Yep. Look, they're okay. They're still, you know, they're three possession game here. They're, they're fine. They just got to continue to get good looks, keep applying themselves defensively, and they'll be okay. Rosario. Over to Long. And they will reset the offense. Four players rotate in and out. No shot clock, as mentioned. Pizzetti. Crossover dribble into the paint, it comes long. Way beyond the three-point arc. Dribble drive up strong, no, three red shirts contested that one. They're gonna say that one off a of Jazz. And so the Astros will get possession with a chance to bump their lead up to 11, possibly 12. Jirasi now is gonna work on Dufo. A little behind the back, over the Cardinal beak. Fires across the way to White. Finds Lavoie in the corner, side iron, no. Nice rebound by Long, good transition defense by the Astros. Long, the runner in the lane is good! Great take. Forcing the issue there, sophomore Maddie Long and a good make. But back the other way once again, the transition defense not so good as uh, Benz has her fifth point of the quarter. 5.27 to go. Got to be careful to watch out for that travel there. Coach Buskey wanted it. Good quick hands inside the paint, and White comes the other way like a locomotive and puts that one home. This one's starting to get away just a tad as the lead is ballooned to 11. Looks like Drapo coming into the game here, Jason. Yeah, yeah you can't so take him with you, right? So you may as well get her on the floor. Another runner in the lane, no foul call, and... A defensive rebound there, Pinkerton will run. This is Dupuy. Runner in the lane is no good, contested. Good box out by Pizzetti, she'll run. Two on three with a trailer to the left. Nice kick out. Jazz, little ball fake. They collapse on her, it comes over to Philbrick. Philbrick now. And a hacked in the act as she kind of dribbled delayed there. That one's gonna go against Dupuy. Nice move by Philbrick. And you heard Coach Craig say it. Uh, Philbrick will check out. Valuable minutes there. Drapo will check back in. Possession will go to the Cardinals underneath the hoop. Long to do the honors. They get it into Drapo. Yeah. And that pass, just a lazy pass. Drape, or, uh, a nice move by Lavoie. And she saw that all the way. And she's got four in the third quarter. And that one's going to go against Dufo. That's her first personal. So 42-29. Astros imposing their will a tad here in the third frame. Three-point play is completed by Lavoie. She's got 12. Jazz now gets the pick on ball from Drapo. Pick and roll. Kick out, long, way downtown, in and out. Got to be careful there. Ball hits the deck. Nice play. And I tell you, nice job by Rosario. She was lucky she didn't get called on the foul. Lavoy kick out. Losing the handle briefly was Dupuy. No, but an offensive rebound by White. We're going to get a jump ball call. Possession will go to the cards. So the card's fortunate there. Back the other way comes Rosario. Measuring it up, little ball fake there. Pizzetti now, right hand dribble in the lane. It gets cut off. Cards very unselfish with the ball in this possession. Pizzetti, right hand dribble, crossover. Runner in the lane, a little leather souffle. We're going to get a foul call, however. Coach Buskey can't believe it, thought it was a block shot. And we'll see if what the call is, if it's uh, the body. And that one is going to go against Alexandria White. That's her second. And that will send Pizzetti to the line for a pair.
First one is up and good. Bazzetti will get a second. That's her first point of the game. Jason, you know, three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. You want to try to keep this thing single digits heading into the fourth quarter if you can. So that is the goal, and they'll get an opportunity to do just that as a little over-aggressive on the offensive end, throwing the ball around and throwing it away. And the Cards will have a chance to do just what Coach Craig said, cut into that 10-point lead, get it down to single digits. And it'll start with Jazz. She'll rotate to her left, gets the pick from Dufo, fighting through it was Dupuis. Double forearm shiver there. Dufo now, crossover in the corner, loses her dribble, finds Jazz. Got to get out of that corner. And a reach and foul there and a cheap one. And I think that's going to go against Jirasi. But again, a situation where when they go, when they, they go into the mm -hmm. land down low, good things happen. Yeah. More often than not, when they put pressure on the defense by getting the ball into the paint, they're getting good looks either at the rim or on, on a pretty simple kick out. So let's, let's hope they continue to try to force that issue and not settle. Long to do the honors on the R and Cardinals. Gets it into Drapo. Drapo looking for help to Pizzetti. Pizzetti marked up closely by Benz. And be careful not to drag that foot. The runner in the lane there you go. is no good. And another opportunity. And I think that's going to go on White. And that's going to be her third personal foul, I believe. Nope, they're going to give that one to Elizabeth Lavoy, her second. But anytime you can score, Coach, without the clock running, that's a good thing. Yeah, again, just uh, pretty simple stuff, right? Aggressive to the basket. Side iron, no good for Philbrick on the first one. She will get a second. Back iron, no, 0 for 2 on that trip. White will run. She'll slow things down between the legs, gets it over in the corner to Jirasi. Jirasi measured up by Jazz. A little spin move and a nice make there by Jirasi. Pretty shot. Philbrick nearly has the ball stolen. Fortune to come away with possession. Philbrick will reverse direction, go into the paint, and back out. Good job of moving their feet is this uh, Astro defense. Goes into the corner, long, back to Philbrick. Left-hand dribble, skip pass across the way to Jazz. Ball fake, nice job of the ball fake. Drapo in time. the lane and can't get it to go. The shot was contested by White, good no call. Back the other way, three on one opportunity and in for the Astros as Jirasi goes the distance. And that's five, they're at the line now for the last two minutes, but look, hey Jason, they've been, they've been getting hurt in transition this entire quarter. Yep. They gotta get that cleaned up. And uh, you can't give those, those freebies away, and that's a, spoken from a guy that knows as the Cardinals of old made their hay in transition basketball. And uh, this time they're just, they're becoming the victim Long now. Hits the first. Nice make there by the sophomore. And she has six points. What's the call? He called a the violation. line violation. A line violation. Was it on Pizzetti? Don't love that call, Jason. Yeah, the basket's not good. I, I think there are other things you could be looking for. One man's opinion. Make that two. Yeah. Lavoy comes back the other way. And that one is Pizzetti, and she knows it. A little aggressive there by Jana. That'll be her. I believe they have her for three. So she'll head to the bench and Dufo will come back in. So obviously things, Coach, that, that this Cardinal team can work on. I'm sure the point of emphasis is going to be transition defense yep. and the cheap fouls. Yep, yep. Dufo comes away with the steal there and the Cards will get an opportunity in the half court. Drapo, left-hand dribble, finds Jazz. Jazz into the paint, 
Runs across the foul line, finds Dufo. Dufo loses the dribble. Good patience and unselfish basketball by the Cardinals. Nice defense employed by Lavoy, and coming away with that miss was Dupuy. And again, Pinkerton will run White underneath, and she's just making her hay. She's got 12. 49-34, we're under a minute to go in the third quarter. Philbrick looking for help. Guarded up closely there by Lavoy. Drapo, she'll drive, kick out Dufo from the corner. Yahtzee! Driving kick, right, Jason? That's Driving it. Driving kick, simple game. And uh, when you can shoot like that, you can do it all day long. Yeah, that helps, right? Behind the back, runner in the lane and a reach in by Dufo. That'll put, that'll put Pinkerton at the line for the last 30 seconds as well. So that will send, as Coach mentioned, Dupuy to the line for a pair. She knocks down the first. An awfully good free throw shooting Well, team, huh? you know, it looks familiar, doesn't it, Coach? Transition yeah. buckets and free throws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, a Bishop Girton staple, if ever we've seen one. So, page out of the Brad Craig playbook. Jazz, dribble drive, runner underhand, no. And that was partially blocked. Jirasi will come the other way. Working on long, nice little underhand dish, and White is just finding it real easy underneath the hoop. She's got six here, way downtown, side iron no, and again, they'll run. White kicks it out to Lavoie, she couldn't get it off in time. So, coach, we've got a minute till the fourth quarter, and the lead uh, has extended here just a bit, it's a 16 point Pinkerton lead heading into the final quarter. Points of emphasis uh, that you're talking to your kids about as we head into the final frame. Yeah, that's a 24 point quarter for Pinkerton right there. And I would bet you when they go back and look at that film, half of those points were in transition where they just lost people. So, you know, again, a great learning experience for these guys. Everything they're doing, every game they play, every experience they go through is really a first thing, first time for them. So. They'll take a lot away from that for the third quarter, and I'm sure they'll spend time in the next couple of days buttoning up their transition defense. So, you know, hard way to learn, but and, and you're not learning a, nonetheless. Not a terrible quarter for Girton offensively, 12 points, but you're giving up those, you know, those free runs, you're giving up those uh, those layups and, and those leading to three-point opportunities. Yeah. And obviously Pinkin is gonna make their freebies and, yeah. and a learning experience, and certainly not something that, you know, look, you see this Pinkerton team again down the road, you know what the formula is. Yeah. You know you know the answers to the test before you take it. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And again, it, it, it's just a great learning experience for them. Um, you know, this Pinkerton team is so talented that they're gonna score on you. But I think it's really important, you gotta make them execute. You gotta make them earn it in the half court. Um, um, you know, the freebies, really, really hurt you because they can spur it on you. And you saw that, you know, 6-0 quarter in the first minute, uh, mostly in transition. So just got to button it up in transition, play good, solid half-court defense, and make these guys earn it. Oh, points in bunches. And right there, you saw Lavoy go back door, was awarded with a nice pass. And uh, the Astros feeling it now as they balloon up to 55-37. Into the corner, now around the top it comes. Regan finds Jazz, Jazz will penetrate. He was looking for Dufo and Lavoy got her hand in the passing lane. Cards will keep possession. And a uh, little discussion here on the side. Exchanging of recipes and we are off and running. Rosario gets a pick on ball. Dufo will roll, she'll get the ball returned back. And they will reset. And that's from way downtown, side iron, no. Glass is cleared by Jirasi, and Pinkerton will slow it down. Over the beak they come, Jirasi penetrate, kick out. We're gonna get a foul before the shot. 
That one is gonna go against Long. That's her second personal. And as we say that, Pizzetti will check in. Long will check out with the three personals. As you mentioned, the fouls reset themselves. So the first team foul against Girton, the race is to five. Got to get the ball in. And it comes into White, but Pizzetti stepped into that passing lane, nearly coming away with a steal. Well, that kick competes, huh? She sure does. This Bishop Girton team, the host, uh, I believe it's Concord Christian. Next Tuesday, Next I think, Tuesday right? Next Tuesday at 6.30. And then I think that's uh, they have a home and away with Concord Christian. That's think, correct. Uh, yeah, they'll play him again uh, on February second. I think Tuesday's game's at home, Jason. Yes, it's correct. Yep, yeah. it'll be here. So a little home cooking for the Cards. Nice quick hands there by Drapo, push the ball stripping there. Lavoy. Back the other way comes Dufo in the Cards. Jazz, nice take. Runner, no, she hits the deck hard. Offensive rebound, Drapo will fire from way downtown, no. And Jirasi will come away with that rebound. And the cards will run, Jazz gets back that time, and I think that one went off an Astro, and it did. So bodies hitting the floor everywhere. Lavoie wincing in a little bit of pain, as is White. So, transition defense. Yep. <coughs> this did Pink a much better job getting back there. This Pinkerton team will host Portsmouth on the ninth, and uh, Portsmouth in that, on that short list as well, Coach. So that should be a good one. That's going to be a heck of a basketball game. Do you know where that is, by That's the way? going to be at Pinkerton, I believe. Got it. Yep, that's going to be a, a, a heck of a game. Two really, really good basketball teams. And kick out, fired from way downtown was Dupuis. No, Push Drapo the with the board, and they will run. Nice. Three on one, tries to thread it. And an, oh, a great effort there. Pizzetti kind of twisted and contorted her body but couldn't get the make. A little pull up jumper, kiss off the glass. Lavoy, nice job not to get called for the travel there, keeping that foot in contact with the ground. 57 37, 20 point Astro lead. Drapo now at the elbow, fires it back out to Dufo. And she Yahtzee's another. He's just gonna have to get up and, uh, you know, make this a full court game right now. They're 17 down with five left, you know. Lose by lose by 15, lose by 30, what's the difference? I think they gotta try to ratchet up the pressure and see if they create some turnovers. Yeah, and White just having her way as uh, they have had no answer for senior Alexandria White on the glass, on the backdoor cuts, in the paint. The lead is now 19, and Coach, you mentioned it, uh, a situation that might call for a little full court pressure here from the young Cardinal team. We'll see if Coach Orlando is uh, putting that into play as we speak. This game was a two point game at halftime. Do you think that's a, a byproduct maybe of a Pinkerton team looking past this Cardinal team and thinking about Portsmouth or, or is it a matter of, look, we're really not familiar with what this Cardinal team is yet. We gotta get a feel for it. Yeah, I'd say probably more of the latter. I don't think Coach Buskey's the type that's going to let her kids uh, come into this place and, and take anybody lightly. Um, so I think, like, I think the Gurdon kids just played a really solid, squared away first half. Um, you know, they had leg, they're, their legs, they look a little tired to me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but they, you know, they're playing with great energy in the first half and so forth. Look, I think the first minute and a half of that third quarter, that little 6 7 nothing spurt, you know, set them back. Great, again, great lesson for a young team who, you know, basically went toe to toe with with, with one of the big dogs in the state for for 16 minutes. You know, they'll learn that you got to come out with that same intensity and and uh, and bring that same same kind of energy in the third quarter as well. And you know, bit them a little bit, but they'll learn from it. And if there's one thing we know about this Cardinal team, it's whether they're up or they're down. As Regan gets a good look at it, White clears the glass. <coughs> They play with the same intensity the entire game as Drapo gets her hand in that passing lane. And if she didn't, Dufo was going to get it. So, you know, the mistakes that they're making are all correctable. And, and as I said to you, it's a, it's a, my quote from the Terminator movie, it's a learning computer. Yeah. These guys are figuring it out as, uh, as they go along here. And you can see the Im improvements as uh, Lavoie just makes a, a next level move to the basket. That's a scholarship athlete. That's correct. Right there, right? That's right. 
Girton came back the other way, fired, and again, got to get back in transition and uh, an aggressive foul there. Good sportsmanship as uh, Dufo helps up Lavoy. That foul will go against Dufo. That is her third personal, and it's the second team foul. Meanwhile, no fouls against Pinkerton. We're almost halfway through uh, the third quarter, and that is a lot of times, more times than not, the result of tired legs, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah, they're just not, you know, they're not finding uh, finding it quite as easy to get to the rim as they did early in the game, and, uh, you know, Pinkerton's, I'll bet you Pinkerton scored three quarters of their points, you know, within six feet of the rim here in the second No half. doubt, and, and that was a situation where Dupuis went back door, Pazzetti was there, but she gave up a little bit of height, and yep. Dupuis was able to outreach her for the ball. Yep. Yeah, Drabel gonna get called for the travel. And a little frustration showing now on the faces of the cards. But I'm a big uh, believer in, 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 in uh, body language and watching kids, both teams really, at halftime come out and you can kind of see the, oh, and uh, very fortunate there as uh, Jazz gets rolled up under and her legs kicked out from underneath Lavoy. So that's a good sign for both kids as Lavoy's gonna head to the line. She's got six so far here in the fourth quarter. And front irons the first, she'll get a second. You know, Jason, part of what you start to think about if, you know, Coach Liv and her staff is, you know, what can we take away from this game? Positive. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, again, that first half, if they could just bottle that first half and right. figure out how to play for 32 minutes like that. You know, again, one of the premier teams in the state of New Hampshire, uh, they're going to be just fine. And I think, you know, the, you watch how these guys have developed uh, – you know, just in the first month of the season, you know, I don't think if they had Pinkett on an open night, they're capable of that, but they've come along so much in just 30 days. It's really kind of exciting to think about what they're going to look like late January and late February, right? You know, it's funny, Brad. When you look at the standings, you're going to see as uh, fired from way downtown, long long rebound, and Tufo will get it. Lucky she didn't get called for a carry there, but Regan now back. Runner in the lane is good. Pretty shot there. This is a Bishop Girton team that's going to be one and three, you know, after the first four games of the of the season, the ones that count. But it's really not a one and three team, and I think we all know it's a team that that uh, they can make a big splash in the tournament when they get there. And I fully expect this young team to get there. Yeah, look, they're one and three, and they've played uh, an undefeated Londonderry team. Uh, who's a contender. Goff. Yep. They played a Final Four team from last year in Goffstown who's got a bunch of kids back, and they're playing a team that I think, you know, if you asked anybody who follows uh, Division I basketball here, expects this team to be competing for a state championship in March at UNH. Well, we've said it here on the highlight, Guy, is a good job under the glass. Three Cardinals converge, and Long will battle for it on the floor. We'll get a jump ball call. As we've said here on the highlight, Guy, and we'll, we'll continue to reiterate it, we are not homers we don't try to be the you know only call it one way we call it both ways and this is a team that no one's going to want to play in february no, i don't, think so. March. I don't be, think so they're gonna be a tough out they're gonna be a tough out you know i got you got to give the pingerton kids here due to i don't think anybody wants to play them <laughs> then no one's either. play them now no. or then but if you play them then <coughs> you, you know you've gotten into the tournament yeah no and, that's right it may be deep so that's right that's a good thing but yeah this is a pingerton team that you know what it it took them a little bit to kind of figure out what was going on out there and then they they kind of hit the ground running to start the second half and yeah. Yeah, and the, another turnover there it's by Philbrick. And the worst thing maybe Brad that could have happened for this Girton team is halftime. The stoppage in play, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe he, you had time to look up and see the scoreboard for the first time and say, "Hey, yeah. wait a second. I actually thought about it for <laughs> yeah, a second. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, you know, tired legs maybe a little bit. You have you have a, uh, you know, some kids out there. You have some Let's be honest, some 14-year-olds competing against some 17- and 18-year-olds. I mean, no, it, it makes a difference. That's exactly right. You know, that's exactly right. And, uh, you know, again, sounds sounds sound like a broken record, but they're going to get better because of this. Yeah. Um, they, yep. They'll get better because of this. And, you know, again, all, all the credit to the Pinkerton kids, too. That's a mature, upperclassman-heavy team that – probably didn't feel like they played their best in the first half and came out and did what good teams do. Yeah. And kind of put the hammer down in the third quarter. Oh. 
And Speaking nice of putting look. the hammer down, pretty fadeaway by Jirasi. Looking like Kobe Bryant out there. Nice shot by her. Philbrick gathers it in, 66-42. And uh, this was just a two-point Pinkerton lead at halftime. And they have just come out on fire. The runner in the lane, hard, no good. Lavoy will come away with it, needs help. Finds Dupuy, and the runner in the lane is good. And a nice make there by Jirasi. And you just kind of see you know, this is a Pinkerton team that's long in the tooth, and they just know how to play. Yep. And that foul, I think, is going to go against White. That'll be her third personal, and it is. And she's had a heck of a game here tonight. She has 16 points. <coughs> Meanwhile, this is long. Side iron on the first, she'll get a second. And, uh, you know, not a, not a Bishop Girton team that uh, gets to the foul line a lot during the game, and, and that's, you know, largely because they don't really drive a lot. Yeah, good luck. I think you saw glimpses of them attacking the rim in the first half. Yeah. And I think that's something, again, when they, when they look at this film and they look at the things they did well and stretches in the game where they were competing really well, you know, I think that's going to be one of their takeaways is, you know, when we actually got downhill and put pressure on the defense, uh, good things happened for us offensively. That was a pretty move by Lavoy and uh, White blocking that shot. And they'll run Dupuy in the corner. Finds Chirassi, pretty wraparound pass. And Brooke Benz finishes it. And we'll get a timeout here. And uh, you can see the reaction from the Pinkerton bench. It was... A matter of time before they got their foot on that accelerator playing unselfish basketball and just a, a glimpses of a team that's uh, been there, done that, played with each other for several years and uh, a Bishop Girton team that's still kind of trying to figure things out, including rotations, including, you know, who brings what to the dance. The one thing I will say about this Girton team from a scoring standpoint is the scoring has always been fairly balanced. You know, up and down the ledger. It hasn't just been one or two kids. It's always been six or seven kids. And they're being outdone by a team that's had eight kids score tonight. Yep. And uh, led by uh, senior Liz Lavoie. She has 21 points so far on the evening. And White has 16. Runner high off the glass with the left is no good, but Phil Brick will get hacked in the act and she'll head back to the line. That one's going to go against Dupuy. That's her third personal. Just the team's second. Acoustic Shadows once again. You get to hear it on this side of things. Yeah. The acoustic Shadows. They are real. And. Uh, Philbrick 0 for 3 so far on the evening. She'll get a second chance. Back iron. And they're going to call another violation, this time on Pinkerton. So we've seen two of those. I don't think I see saw two of those all last year. Hmm. Philbrick misses. Long gets the long offensive rebound. Jazz up and under and wanted the foul, no call. Back the other way comes White, pressured there by Pizzotti. Pizzetti now taking away that dribble drive. Nice backdoor cut again, unselfish basketball by the Astros way downtown. No offensive rebound and I think she just slipped but White definitely got hacked in the act. And you can see uh, Benz is kind of wincing there as uh, she hit the deck pretty hard. But White was there to clean the glass and she'll head to the line for a pair. This is the first, trying to notch her 17 point. We got, I think, five fouls being called here before So Avery McKiernan will check in, and that'll be Pizzetti's fifth foul, or 
Greeted by her teammates on the bench. Can't take them with you. So McKiernan, the sophomore, will get her first action in the evening. White, one out of two, and she has 17. So just a very well-seasoned Pinkerton team. Yahtzee from the outside, firing from way downtown is McKiernan, and she's in the book. She'll hit it at the buzzer, so the final score will be a little different. The final from the campus of Bishop Girton High School, the 4-0 and undefeated, one of the preseason favorites, Pinkerton Astros, 73. The young Bishop Girton Cardinals, 46. But we'll reiterate the fact that this is a Cardinal team that was down by just two points at halftime. A third quarter that got away from them a little bit and a learning experience if ever there was one. A humbling experience, but a learning experience. And if you get an opportunity to see this Pinkerton team down the road, you'll know it's because you made the second season and you'll be fully ready to go. Coach, uh, your thoughts on this one here is uh, we will uh, host Concord Christian before we <coughs> prepare for that one. Your take on this one here tonight. Yeah, kind of tail, tail of two games, right? First half, uh, pretty even up game. Second half, got away from them a little bit. Um, you know, they're going to have to learn from that. Um, but look, if, if the, what, what we've seen from them in the first month of the season is any indication, um, you know, Liv will do a great job reinforcing how important it is to play 32 minutes, and uh, that will not happen to them again. So really looking forward to seeing these guys uh, as they continue to develop throughout the year. The uh, Brad Craig fan club is here in effect. I... We never get visitors like this up into the booth. Who we got here tonight, Coach? Who's with us? We got the grandkids. We yeah. got the grandkids. We got Axel and Ty and Poppy. Axel, Ty, and Poppy. How you guys doing? <laughs> Welcome to the highlight guy. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. Glad to have you all here. Well, it is a family fair up here in the booth. As uh, Coach Craig, nice enough to, uh, to give us some color commentary here. Save my voice a little bit. Coach, I uh, hope you're able to join us again. Uh, yeah, At the next to. game against Concord Christian, it's, uh, it certainly was uh, an awesome addition here. Yeah. Well, from the uh, campus of Bishop Girton High School, we want to thank you all for watching us here on the Highlight Guy. For my broadcasting partner, Coach Brad Craig, for the man on the moving pictures, Steve Cody, my name is Jason Roby, reminding you all that it's not the critic who counts, but you can always count on the critic. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Say bye-bye.